Hey guys, it has been a long time since I uploaded a video, and I'm sorry about that, but I have somehow just found the time to put one together. There is going to be a consistent theme between current world events and the topic of this video. I wanted to look at the one well-known pandemic in the Fallout universe and draw as many parallels between the new plague and our world. I'll be looking at official lore, unofficial lore, and any inferences I made while researching this topic. What is confirmed about the new plague is that it first arose in the US in 2052. In 2053 came the first national quarantine as something that became known as the new plague spread across the United States. The games themselves confirm some aspects of the virus. The symptoms consist of contusions or bruising, sweating, swelling, and external hemorrhaging or bleeding. These are some pretty severe symptoms and show that this virus was awfully virulent. Although there are no official numbers for infections or deaths, these symptoms coupled with the quarantine measures, which is stated to be the first quarantine the US had ever instituted, so no COVID-19 in the Fallout universe I guess. These point to the new plague as being particularly bad. Looking at these symptoms, we find that these are consistent with a class of viruses referred to as hemorrhagic viruses. Viruses like Ebola, Dengue fever, and Yellow fever are hemorrhagic viruses exhibiting similar symptoms. The games also refer to the method of transmission, which is through social interaction. While this may seem obvious, hemorrhagic diseases like Dengue fever and Yellow fever are actually passed by insect bites. The fact that social interaction spreads the virus would indicate that it can be spread via bodily fluids although it is not specified whether it is spread via droplets, like coronaviruses, which is very contagious, or just bodily fluids, which is slightly less infectious. The primary methods for fighting the virus were isolation and containment, which is an effective deterrent to either fluid or droplet transmission. Confirmed lore also states that the new plague continued to be a problem through the 2060s and into the 2070s. Although a cure or vaccine for the virus would be expected given the time it was a national crisis and given the advanced tech of the fallout world. However, there are some hemorrhagic viruses that plague our world that we do not have vaccines for. For example, yellow fever is a virus with a vaccine while Ebola is one that does not have one yet. It has been proven, however, that certain antiviral drugs and drug cocktails can reduce the virulence and lethality of viruses and can increase people's chances of recovery. No such mention of a cure, vaccine, or any sort of treatment was ever made in lore, but it was not for a lack of trying. The infamous West Tech is described as being commissioned by the government to research a cure. This however did not yield any tangible results, even through decades of research. This culminated in the Panviron Immunity Project, which started as an attempt to find a cure for the new plague and for other Chinese biological weapons. The goal of the project was to alter DNA in order to make the new plague and other viral and bacterial threats ineffective. The project ended up transitioning into research on the forced evolutionary virus, and all previous goals were abandoned. No cure for the new plague was ever developed or, if it was, was never made public, and official lore on this leaves the answer ambiguous. Now I'm going to look at some non-canonical sources, because they're quite interesting, and you never know what official lore will actually be confirmed. In Van Buren, the original project that was to become Fallout 3, they described the beginning of the new plague in greater detail. The new plague started as a project called Limit 115 that was created in a lab and weaponized possibly to be used against China. This was stolen by Chinese agents and the vials were accidentally broken when trying to escape in Denver. From then on, it would go to ravage the US and kill over 200,000 people. We learned that the new plague gets different symptoms and is referred to as being close to the classical flu. Respiratory infections would often result in death and those that recover would become sterile. The disease would also be known as the blue flu although it isn't entirely clear why. It could be associated with low oxygen due to the lung infections, but it's never officially explained. These symptoms are pretty standard for colds and flus, but also contradict the established symptoms of swelling and internal and external hemorrhaging. This explanation of the new plague makes it seem like a flu or cold 
but with the added effect of sterility. Now this would have had to have been specially engineered as the only known diseases that occur naturally that can cause fertility issues are STDs. The new plague would have played a very important role in Van Buren, with the main villain using Limit 115 to set in motion a series of events that would allow him to access a nuclear weapon system that could selectively take out mutated creatures and people while leaving the pure humans to repopulate the world, which is fairly similar to the Enclave's plan to purge the world of mutations. The new plague has not played nearly as significant a role in the official games and is only ever referred to and touched on briefly. There is an instance in Fallout New Vegas that seems to confirm the non-canonical origin. There are some Chinese stealth suits that are found in a random container in Hoover Dam, suggesting the Chinese secret agent theory is canon. In Fallout 4 there is an equally ambiguous confirmation in the form of a companion quest for McCready. You learn that his son is sick with a disease that does not seem to get any better and that causes blue boils and a high fever. During the quest, you investigate and procure a possible cure for his son from a med tech facility. Now there are a few issues with this, alluding to being a possible case of the new plague in the post-nuclear wasteland. Firstly, it is never stated how exactly the blue flu got its name and it was assumed it may be due to low oxygen levels caused by the respiratory infections of Limit 115. If McCready's son does indeed have the new plague, this would mean that the blue flu name comes from blue boils. Secondly, no known cure was ever developed, but the fact that you find a cure makes it questionable whether it actually is the new plague, whether the claims that there was no cure were actually true or false, or lastly, that the cure, which was called prevent, was meant for something else entirely and actually won't heal McCready's son. Fallout 4, therefore, may or may not verify some of this non-canonical lore. On the subject of the disease McCready's son has, blue boils are something that are entirely in the domain of fiction, and some of the only known diseases to cause people to turn blue include the 1918 Spanish flu, which caused some people to turn a shade of gray-blue due to lack of oxygen and cholera, which can cause people to go a shade of blue due to a lack of fluids. The origin story from Van Buren also has a number of true-to-life analogs. Most major countries on Earth have research labs that research many viral and bacterial diseases and even alter them and weaponize them, upping their virulency and overall lethality many times that of their natural counterparts. Even the part about the accidental leakage has precedence in our world. In 1979, in the USSR, in a city called Sverdlovsk, or something like that, there was a military research facility that accidentally released a strain of anthrax that had been weaponized and aerosolized. This leak happened due to a miscommunication when a filter that was commonly taken out and replaced was removed and was not replaced before work continued. This resulted in a number of people in a nearby ceramic plant falling ill many of which died within a week. Official numbers are hard to come by because there was extensive censoring of the incident and the government was quick to create a cover story of contaminated meat. All right, now for some personal inferences made from the official lore. The new plague falls within the hemorrhagic virus family due to the symptoms. It is also stated that a cure was never developed, although it is never clarified whether this was because it was too difficult or the government just did not prioritize this. If a cure was never developed due to the difficulty, this could be because the virus mutated extremely rapidly, therefore making an effective vaccine difficult to produce. If this is the case, the virus was most likely an RNA virus, which had the highest proportions of mutation when compared to other types of viruses. Ebola is actually an RNA virus, which leads even more credence to this theory as Ebola is also a hemorrhagic virus just like the new plague. Lastly, due to the prevalence of propaganda in the Fallout universe, there is an inescapable possibility that the new plague was used to demonize China, the ever-present enemy known as socialism and communism, and allow the government greater powers to control the populace through quarantine, registration, and tracking. This means that the US government could have released the virus on purpose in order to push their plans of propaganda and control forward or that they capitalized on an accidental release. 
These would seem to allude to the fact that a cure was never intended, and therefore the lack of a cure was not due to anything else other than government malevolence. This is a more sinister take on the new plague, but given what we know about pre-war USA, this is a very probable theory. Given our current circumstances with a global pandemic, we can see some of these things ourselves. Countries use the pandemic to push their brand of propaganda, and for better or for worse, there is more government influence in our lives because of it. We also get a feeling for the type of world it was before the Great War, and would just need to add a big old war and some good old fashioned resource scarcity into the mix. This is some of the beauty of the Fallout universe though, that it has a familiarity because despite the absurdness, the silliness, or the darkness, it is all based on our world. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I'm looking forward to publishing another video here soon.